Okay, I'm gonna quickly run through uh, setting up uh, one of these materials on an avatar and just kind of walk through the process of doing that, explaining various things along the way. Uh, I want to use the uh, the wet latex one on my avatar here. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat is make a copy of it and also make a folder to hold these materials in. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, five materials. Uh, and put all of them on my avatar because my avatar has five material slots. So that's what I'm planning on doing. So first off, uh, let's just name this body. I'm going to put that on the body. Uh, I know I'm going to have teeth and uh, fluff and misc and eyes. Okay. And we're just going to put this on avatar like that uh okay and the next thing i want to do is i want to bake the mesh so we have the proper mission setup okay great so uh let's start with material uh i would like the body I think the albedo is going to be fine. I can set a texture here and a color, but I don't think I want to set anything there. I'm not going to put any kind of AO on the body uh, for the normal map. I do want to put my own normal map on there. So, which one is it? I want that normal map. Yeah, so we have some writings, uh, have some markings. So uh, I will that normal map. And I'm going to stick with the uh, with the wrinkle noise detail map as that gives a little wrinkliness here that I like. Tone it down a little bit. 0.5 though. I like the scroll speed as well. I like the scrolling effects. That is it. The math cap I'm also going to keep. Okay. For the emissions, um, going to. Uh, I can find it. Yeah, there we go. Have the emissions there. Okay. I'm not going to tweak the color. I'm not going to make it so that the emissions stores from albedo. What we can do with the emission from albedo is have it so that uh, we have a albedo texture here, something like um this. Right. Set the white. You can make it with this. Say so we can have it so that the albedo texture becomes emissive. I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to do that. You can also add an emissive color, just the constant color, but I'm also not interested in doing that. Uh, we can toggle glossy reflections off, specular highlights. I'm going to keep that as is. I think I'm going to bump the uh, indirect lighting up to one. Keep the same thing. Uh, I'm not going to use a metallic gloss in this map, but you can um, use the um, same kind of uh, metallic glossiness map that you use in a standard shader here as well, with the R channel being the metallic and the A being the glossiness. But uh, I don't want varying uh, metallic or glossiness over the model, so I'm just going to have a constant. Uh, I don't want any transparency on the edges, especially since I'm currently using rendering preset and I don't want any intersecting object um, effects but these can be pretty cool uh, you can have objects that are intersecting like transparency something like this like the, the blob of honey here is intersecting with the, um, the wall behind it and it's affecting its transparency right you can also have it affect color or change the hue I don't want those things on this material so we're going to skip these so you can just change the hue, change the color, and affect the transparency somehow. For the material mix, uh, I'm not going to want anything on the body. I'm going to get back to this with the fluff, but on the body, I don't want any material mix things happening. For the goo, I think the size of the goo is fine. We can increase this value to make the goo more uh, frequent and more spiky and more noisy, but I think 7.5 works for this model. Uh, the speed of the goo is fine as well. The movement phase is just kind of like 
the offset of, of the goof, that makes sense. So if we like set the speed to zero and then we move this around, we can kind of manually adjust the position and we can also manually animate it. But I don't want to do that for this uh, material, so we're going to keep it as is. I do want the goo to modulate the normal map, detail map, and emission strength. And if we turn those off, you can see that if we turn off the emission strength modulation, that the emission just kind of is there. But if we turn it on, you can kind of see it's kind of fading in and out with the goo. Same with the normal map. If we turn it off uh, with the detail normal map, you can kind of see that the detail normal map is like all over the place. But I like it being modulated, so we're going to keep it on. Same thing for the normal map. Right. Actually, no, maybe I'll, I'll keep this because it's kind of neat. Adds a little bit more spice to it. I'll, I'll keep that, I think. Deformation bulging is the uh, thing around here. You can turn that off, but that kind of makes it less lively, so I want to keep that on. We can mask it, and I'm going to mask it because I have some masks. Just need to find them. There you go. Um. So I'm going to put in a D4 mask, which is just this. What I did here is I got the uh, the uh, the wireframe of the body UV out of Blender and painted over that. To mask out the eyes and I believe some of the um, the mouth here. So that into the D4 mask. It only uses the R channel. You can also use the vertex colors or mask by axis. Mask by axis is actually pretty useful in case um you don't want to paint a texture. You can just use this, click visualize to see what's going on, and adjust the values here. As you can see, where uh, the white parts are going to be the Areas where the um, the deformation happens, and the black parts are going to be where there is no deformation. So, if I want to just, for example, mask out the head, set the local axis to Y on this model. You might need to set it to Z on your model, or maybe X. It depends on how the model is made, and then adjust these values until it kind of fits something like that. For example, right? So it's just the head base. You can turn off visualize, and as you can see. The head is no longer really moving. Right, but the body is. You can use that. Pretty good way of doing it. I already have a D4 mask, so I'm going to use that. The dripping is the dripping, obviously. Um, I'm going to adjust the length of it. Make it rip up if you want. <laughs> um, and adjust the angle at which it starts and which it ends. These angles kind of control. Uh, the sensitivity of down. If we make the start and end be really close to each other, we can see that the um, the trippiness around the arm here gets a bit thinner. But if we adjust the, if we make the start be close to zero, we can see that it's gets really thick now. I'm gonna keep it at point eight. Sensitivity to goo controls how uh, influenced the dripping is by goo. You can bump it up to 1 to make it really influenced by goo, and bump it up to 0 to make it really shy to goo. It's still going to uh, go off of the goo, but not that much. Balanced. Now for touch reactivity. Uh, the defaults here are pretty good. I'm not going to ch change them. You might need to change the amount for your model. Uh, to test this, what I like to do is I like to put a sphere into the scene. Put around. Around the, uh, the mesh and see uh, how the mesh reacts to it. And as you can see to me, it's, that looks good. You might need to change this value for your model. Just don't go too overboard with it, or you can kind of break it, as uh, as you can see here. Keep it keep it within taste. The other thing to note here is that uh, put a directional light on my avatar here, just to make sure that there's a world that doesn't have a directional light in it. Uh, 
at the uh, version light that I provide here with my avatar is going to touch reactivity work. Something that the uh, touch reactivity this proximity distortion thing is something that happens when you get really close to uh, really close to somebody's face. For example. As you can see, if I'm get when I'm getting close to the face, it kind of starts to expand. Right, and if I stop, it doesn't. If that happens or not. This is uh, useful in case um, somebody with a shader is kind of trying to pat or get really up close and personal with um with their hands, somebody's face, and you would expect the hands to kind of expand. Right, due to touch reactivity. That does make sure, and this proximity distortion makes sure that this kind of thing happens, right? If somebody else's, if, if this ball is somebody's face and I am an observer looking at somebody at, at this avatar petting the other avatar, this is what I'll see, right? I'll see their, their hands kind of expand, right? From the perspective of the ball, that proximity distortion, I will just see hands kind of getting close to me. Not doing much. It's it's bulging right now because genius. Yeah, the genius has effect on. So yeah, it's not really not really you can't really see the uh, same thing as if you were just observing it. If we turn on proximity distortion, see now it's kind of like a little bit similar. That's what we want. We're going to keep that on. And of course, there's some advanced settings here. Uh, we're not going to mess with any of them. So I think that's the body setup. Let's go on to the eyes. For the eyes, I'm going to want to use an, an emission texture here. Doesn't really matter. The albedo of my eyes is the same as the emission, so I'm going to. Set this to be one. Uh, everything else, I'll put that to one. Uh, but I also, I'll turn off the uh, dripping on the eyes, and I'll set the um, deformation to be one and zero. I like that a bit. More. As you can see, we kind of can't really see anything. Can't really see the eyes. I think the miscellaneous is blocking it. Eyebrows are blocking it. Uh, we're just gonna turn off dripping on the eye on on the miscellaneous in that. Case. Something else is happy. Face. It is the face. It didn't mask the face out. Mask on. There we go. Let's get back to the eyes now. So, for the eyes, oh, we're going to want to make sure our albedo is white so that properly. Passing the albedo into the emission. And what else? I don't like the detail normal map or the mat gap on the eye, so we're going to remove those. We're going to turn off goo modulation as well. And we're going to turn off touch reactivity on the eyes because I don't want that on the eyes. And I think that's it for the eyes. Yeah, that looks good to me. Fluff. So for the fluff, I'll keep everything the same except for the indirect. I'll set that to one. What I'll want to do for the fluff is I'll want to turn off touch reactivity, keep the dripping, but I'll want to do a material mix. So what a material mix is, is a simple mix between uh, the albedo here, the, the albedo here and the uh, metallic glossiness here with a different albedo and metallic glossiness. It's a simple thing, but it can lead to some nice effects. Uh, what we're going to do is set by axis. This is similar to the masking thing. What I want, what I want here to happen is I want the, the, the hair to have a gradient between the, uh, the wet latex material into a green material at the top here. So we're going to do that. We're going to set, we're not going to set a, uh, a um, texture, we're going to instead set a constant color, something that's not saturated. 
Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Now, I think that works. Yeah, there you go. I think that's that's what I want. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Uh, I'll still want the hair to be kind of feel gooey, so I'll put the glossiness up to one. We can also use a gloss map here. Oh, uh, we can also use a custom axis here. Uh, this is in case you want something a little bit more fancy. Like maybe you want it to be an angle. Do that. I'm not particularly interested in that, so I'm just... You can also use multiple things here. You can use multiple mix modes. You can use a, a mask texture. You can use point lights. Uh, and have this point light prefab here. Mix between them. Proximity of... Mesh to point lights will mix it. This could be fun for, um... Um... Uh... Yeah, for roleplay maybe. Nose. Right. Um we'll see. We also have uh you can also use the dripping as a mask. So only the places where the drip occurs is the places where we do the material mix. So you can do um with that. Maybe I want the dripping to have a specific color to it, right? What if we do that on the body, right? Drip is mask. Set this to be, say, red or something, right? Yeah. And what if you want to in invert it so that it mixes to the material mix first and then mixes to this other material, to the base material on the drip? You can do that and set this to be transparent and set the drip color to be a transparent color and our drip is transparent right stuff like that like there's there's a good amount of stuff i don't want to do any of that with the uh, with this uh material so we're going to set it to my axis i think the fluff is good now so let's get on to misc uh, i'll want to turn off touch your activity on misc i don't want that to happen there uh I think I'll turn off the detail normal map on the misc and the normal detail and yeah. Same thing for the teeth, turn off uh touch reactivity, that and the match cap. Yeah, that looks good. That looks like looks good to me. That looks like we're kinda done here and I can upload. Now on upload. Uh, all these materials are going to be automatically locked. Uh, we're just going to lock them right now as a example. So you won't be able to edit them anymore unless you unlock them. You can right click, select all of them and unlock all of them at the same time if you wish. That's pretty much it.